should be a good video. Actually, I think it'll be a great video. This one especially. I've spent more than a couple of years trying to sum up the nature of lenses, stuff that you don't read about anywhere and stuff that nobody else talks about. By the way, last video, everybody kept asking me where to get this robe at. You actually uh, can't get this robe anywhere because I made it. It's made out of hemp. We're buying some hemp fabric, and I'm pretty good on the sewing machine, so I don't know where you could get it because I made it. I'm certainly not going to make another one. Um, anyway, on lenses. By the way, some British friends of mine sent me this sticker. Oh, I might! <laughs> this Winston Churchill doing this number. Uh, for Americans who don't know, this is the sign for up yours, mate. Up yours. <laughs> Jolly good, eh? You grody little wagger. <laughs> I might put this sticker on my car. It's pretty cool. Um, regarding lenses, I see this comment all the time, and it's absolute BS. Now, Zeiss on their own website has a really detailed description of micro contrast. However, it's pretty inaccurate. Um, I can guarantee you one thing as a bold statement. Oh, that's really egotistical. There's not another single person on this earth that has tested thousands of lenses, owns nearly 500, is an expert on field theory, uh, studied uh, field theory a la Tesla, Faraday, Steinmetz, Heaviside, James Kirk Maxwell, on down the line, and is also a ham radio operator. Because here's the trick question for you. What's the difference between radio waves? I'm going to grab a radio over here. This is a shortwave slash AM, FM radio. What's the difference between radio waves and light waves? You know, the light, light waves, those are... Of course, a wave is not what a thing is, by the way. A wave is what something does, but that's a matter for another discussion that I've made. What's the difference between radio waves and light waves? The answer is there's absolutely no difference. I see all these crazy comments all the time, and I've seen so many of them actually get pissed. And, of course, it's just common ignorance. There's no such thing... I'm going to read a comment here. There's no such thing as 3D pop. It's a uh, not a scientific term that describes the interaction of aperture, focal length, and sensor size and subject. It has nothing to do with that. It has to do with lenses. This video is called, I'm going to appropriately name this video, and it's going to seem absurdly stupid for the title of the video. What, what is a lens? It should be what the hell is a lens, but then people would be pissed if I actually said that for the title. What is a lens? You know, it's kind of amazing that most things in life that we think are so obvious. It's like, what's a car? It's like, well, everybody knows what a car is. I got three cars. We don't know the answer to the most fundamental things that we take for granted. Do you think you know what a lens is? Well, yeah, it's a piece of metal with the focusing elements and glass. You don't actually know what a lens is. Does, is this really important for your photography? No, but it's kind of interesting to know. So is this sort of a trivia video? Like, oh, isn't that interesting? It's actually important, believe it or not, especially when it comes to proper lens selection specifically primes, because there are bad primes out there, most of which are really old and crummy, especially wide angles. What's the difference between a... What is a lens? It's nothing other than an antenna. I don't know if you know much about radio waves, but uh, this is an extremely inefficient antenna. Um, there's a reason why ham radio operators... I don't know if you've ever seen a ham radio operator's house. They'll have a gigantic antenna in the backyard. And an obnoxiously huge, a bombastically huge antenna. It's like, why would somebody need that? Why would somebody... Here's a trick question for you. I know you've all seen a ham radio antenna in someone's backyard. It's like, dude, you probably thought it was a TV antenna. Now it was a ham radio antenna. It was, why does someone have this 30 foot wide, 40 foot long? Some of them are Yagi. Some of them are mixed dipoles and tricones. There, I've got a couple in my backyard. Why would somebody have those obnoxiously huge antennas in their backyard? It's called gain, signal to noise ratio. Why do you think a low element count prime lens like this old 105 millimeters is just one example, five element count, 105 millimeter f1.8, renders so magically? And if you render it in black and white, you go into uh, Lightroom or Photoshop and uh, drop it in uh, as black and white. It's like wow. I've never seen a black and white image pop like that. You remember back a few months ago? Wasn't that long ago? I was uh, using a, uh, a true monochrome camera. You know what a true monochrome camera is? The camera had the color filter array moved off of it. The guy had actually taken some super expensive equipment and scraped off the color filter array. That's the RGB array. All those filters dropped down the low gain or the inner tonal light. 
Now, microcontrast is an incorrect word. Really, it should be called, as I've correctly named it, lens fidelity. You've heard of high fidelity? Like your car audio, you can crank up the speakers. That's just loudness, you know? Resolution is one thing. Microcontrast is something totally different. Regular contrast, microcontrast, really it's incorrect call it microcontrast. It's kind of an inappropriate word. Be lens fidelity. Anybody, by the way, that argues with you, an easy way to destroy them, you know, it's like it's even on Zeiss's own damn website talking about microcontrast. You, you think you know more than Zeiss? People have been talking about 3D pop or microcontrast or lens pop. It doesn't matter what you call it. I've actually got the most correct definition of it, which is lens fidelity. High gain light transmission to the sensor to be recorded. What do you think a lens is? It's nothing other than an antenna. Every lens is an antenna. Now you think, well, it's designed for peak resolution, minimum chromatic aberration, minimum vignetting. All of that is true, but for pure color saturation. Because glass, you think, well, glass is an insulator. That's what you use out in electrical poles. That's true. But it's also a capacitor. Massachusetts Institute of Technology has got a nice YouTube video on that. It's called the dissectable capacitor. It's about glass being the actual capacitor for a charge. If you think light is anything other than an electrical circuit, then you need to slap your school teacher or your college professor for not teaching what the hell light is. Most people don't know what light is. All lenses are a circuit. By the way, here's the quick way to destroy people like that that think uh, they know what the hell they're talking about. Oh, there's no such thing as micro contrast. This is all BS. Because there's no difference between light and radio waves. EM is EM is EM. It's all EMR, electromagnetic radiation. Specifically, it's a coaxial circuit and longitudinal pulse perturbations dielectric, but that's a bit too complicated for most people. Next time some idiot tells you 3D pop or micro contrast doesn't exist, then tell them, oh, then poor cell phone service when you're inside of a building that's heavily shielded with concrete. You ever been in a building or the basement of a building and you got no bars on your cell phone? Yeah. You and that uh, cell phone in your hand would be like the sensor. You got no, you got low gain signal. You got only got. What What do you think that is? What 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 do you think is happening? It's called signal attenuation. When you have, and of course, all lenses are trade off by design. When you have a high element count zoom lens, it's like, well, zooms are handy. That is by their definition what they are. They're handy, but they are far far less. Why the hell would anybody buy a damn prime lens anyway? Why would I buy a nice prime lens? I could buy a zoom lens that covers it all. I've heard that before, and that's just another idiot that doesn't know the advantages of a really 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 good prime lens. It's like, why would you buy a prime lens? I said, I could ask a thousand hardcore professional photographers. Say, quick. Tell me their technical reason, and they won't give an answer. Well, actually, they will. Quick, tell me the technical reason why a prime is better than a zoom lens at the same focal. And they'll say, well, everybody knows a prime lens is better. I said, that's not the damn answer. That's exactly what everyone will say. I mean, hardcore people make their bread and butter, famous photographers, and they don't need to know this to do their skills or their job. Thank God I know it. That's why I make some of these videos. Just ask a professional. Say, why the hell is a prime lens better at the same focal than a zoom lens. A really awesome zoom and a really awesome prime at the same. Well, the prime's better. Why is it better? I don't know. Exactly. You don't frigging know. You don't know, meaning they don't know. And you don't know either, probably. So anybody who thinks that uh, lens micro contrast doesn't exist, or what I've specifically called lens fidelity, say then, well, then there's no such thing. Why, do you, why does your cell phone have bars on it? Well, as for signal attenuation, you know, if you're really far away from a tower, yeah, yeah, that's being far away from a tower. That's something else. That's S and R due to distance, inverse square law. What about if you're really, really, really close to the cell phone uh, transceiver, the tower, the cell phone tower, but you're inside a concrete building with rebar in it? What's, why, why do you got like no signal there? Ah, uh, because the walls and the concrete's blocking it? Exactly! What is that concrete analogous? It'll be like a high element count zoom lens. Anybody that tells you that lens micro contrast doesn't exist is like, well, really? You got satellite TV? Yeah, I do have satellite TV. You know when there comes a really heavy rainstorm or a thunderstorm? It doesn't have to be thunderstorm, just be a rainstorm. You get hardcore signal attenuation. attenuation. By the way, most of those uh, broadcasts, uh, satellite, uh, be it DISH or uh, 
Dish Network or uh, DirecTV is, uh, I think, 5 watts in the 400 megahertz range from 30 miles out in space. It's only putting out 5 watts. That rainwater, water, the hydrous oxide falling down on your house, is uh, causing signal attenuation. And it's like, so why, do you, why, did your, uh, why does your satellite TV drop out during a, a heavy rainstorm? Well, because of the rain. Yeah, but why? All of these idiots that think that micro contrast or 3D pop or lens pop, or it doesn't matter what you call it, all of those things are just BS terms referring to the same thing. Anybody that thinks that doesn't exist is an idiot. It does exist. It's not only scientific, it's hyper scientific. Every lens is a circuit. All glass is both an insulator and a capacitor. There's no such thing as a true capacitor. No, no such thing as a true insulator. Everything is uh, capacitance, resistance, permeability, and permittivity. So far as uh, light, it is E equals nu F. Energy equals uh, Planck's constant times the frequency. Do you need to know that math equation? No. Does that pertain specifically to photography? It does. Because photography is mostly art, but there's, there's still science in there. And if you think that, well, you know, good prime lens is good prime No, there's a lot of, especially today's lenses are over-designed to eliminate chromatic aberration and vignetting. And what they've done is they've sacrificed something that this lens has. Well, this lens has a good bit of chromatic aberration and vignetting when you shoot wide open at f1.8. But it's also got this incredible micro contrast. You can eliminate out that chromatic aberration in the Photoshop. Easy to eliminate. So... I don't care what you call it, micro contrast, 3D pop, 3D pop, but it does exist. It's specifically lens fidelity. Just call it high fidelity audio. Ever heard high fidelity audio? Like a true master? Have you ever heard, most of you have never heard high fidelity. I used to have some really hardcore audio recording equipment and uh, sound devices, which is the best that money can buy, playback devices that it record, and uh, oh, some non lossy, oh man. You could play that back and you just feel like you're right there. Uh, it's just astounding. Most people have never heard that. We're all used to MP3 and crap we hear on our uh, radio in our car. Um, micro contrast is real. Is this specifically important relative to your photography? It kind of is. I mean, it's good to know the science of photography because we're talking about light. Light is EMR. Why do you think a ham radio guy, I'll reiterate again, has super gigantic, obnoxious, bombastic, ugly-ass antennas in his backyard? Why the hell does he just have one of these? You know, this is a shortwave radio right here. Why, doesn't, why is it this uh, antenna in, uh, sufficient enough? Because it's low-gain crap antenna. Why do you think directional antennas with huge elements are important to signal transmission and reception? Not only are they directional, they're pointable like a Yagi antenna, but they are harmonic with the frequency that they're tuned to. All uh, lens design is a trade-off between uh, ultimate rendering and keeping uh, at bay chromatic aberration and vignetting and having maximum resolution. Uh, every lens designer will actually tell you this fact, that there's a, a happy medium there and it's often not met. This is why certain focal lengths are magical. Magical focal lengths are 35 millimeter, 50 to 55, um, 85, 100, 105, uh, 200, uh, 180 to 220. Uh, those are the magic uh, focal lengths that are able to have the perfect compromise or perfect harmonic balance. Yeah, harmonic balance, excuse me, between uh, uh, image fidelity or ultimate SNR transmission to your sensor and keeping at bay uh, uh, enough chromatic aberration and vignetting and high, resolu high resolution to make an all-around wonderful lens. But micro contrast does exist, and uh, this is more of a nerdy video, but it is a nerdy video. But uh, you don't know, and neither do these people that talk about lenses know what the hell a lens even is. It's a freaking antenna. I mean, what the hell do they think light is? They actually think, and if you got to think about it, you should think about this. What the hell is the difference between a lens and a radio antenna? And the answer is absolutely not one single GD damn thing. Not a single thing. There's no difference in there. Both of these are optimized, or hopefully optimized. In this case, it's for convenience, since it's small, crappy, and collapsible. This is not an optimal antenna. Both of these are specifically optimized 
for maximum SNR and transmission of the tuned frequency. In case lenses, like these have to tune multiple frequencies between shortwave AM and FM, of which this lens is inefficient, and all lenses are also inefficient because they have to tune between the entire spectrum of visible light. Red and light has lower capacitance by a rate of 1 to 1.7, I believe, over that of uh, high frequency, uh, high capacitance light towards the, uh, towards the uh, blue end of the spectrum to the green and the blue end. This is also the reason why sunlight is attenuated of its blue and green frequencies when it's on the sunrise and sunset you end up seeing red light from the sun at sunrise and sunset because the high capacitance light blue and green is attenuated um, by the uh, significant amount of air that it's having and particles that it's having to pass through that's why sunrise and sunlight sunset light is red lenses work the same way a lens is an antenna micro contrast is real I mean, it always it just blows my mind when people say micro contrast isn't real. It's like, yeah, well, the bars on your uh, cell phone must not be real either. When it talks about you have no signal, it's like, well, I'm really close to that cell phone tower. It's like, yeah, but you're in a concrete building, you know, that is uh, reinforced with rebar. You know, why the hell do you think you got no signal inside that really heavy old concrete building? Signal attenuation. The exact same answer applies to high element zoom lenses. It's like, why do these lenses, these images not pop so much on a zoom lens that has like a billion glass elements in it, as opposed to a really awesome prime lens? Same damn reason. That's why if you ask a professional photographer, any photographer, it's like, why is a, a really good prime lens better than a, uh, a really good zoom lens? Like, well, because it's better. It's like, that's not an answer, damn it. It's not an answer. That's what everybody will say. It's like, what's the real answer? But I, I don't know. It's like, yeah, that's my point. You don't know. Well, I know it's better, but why is it better? I don't know. It's just better. <laughs> uh, do you have to know how a washing machine works to, to turn the knobs? And it's like, I just know it works. It's like, hello. Like somebody dropped something. Most people just don't care how something works. When you actually know how and why something works, then you're actually able to make wiser choices and decisions, especially when it comes to picking lenses. Well, you know, it's just a lens, it works. Yeah, but is it the best? You know, is there something cheaper and better? The answer in lenses is usually yes, and I know those answers. If you like this video, click the link below. Tell me to jump off a cliff. Whatever makes you happy. Some people uh, cannot be made happy, as I see from the comments. Be like, I hate you. You're fat, bald, and ugly. You're annoying. I don't like you. It's like, good. Like, why do you keep watching then? I don't know. I just hate you. I want to see what you say next because I hate you so much. <laughs> <laughs> uh.